99% win rate, 40,000% in profits, 20,000% in profits. You have all seen backtest videos like this, and hopefully you know, but maybe you don't. These are not real backtest. Backtesting is very, very easy to fake. And in the last episode of the ThinkScript miniseries on this channel, I'm going to be going over how to utilize the code that we have written to not only backtest, but to ensure that you're backtesting properly. So make sure you hit like if you do enjoy. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on videos like this in the future. I trade live over on Twitch TV every day. See you there jump into it. So we now have a code that is, remember, simulating trades. It is taking and entering where you want your strategy to take and enter trades. And with that, you now have a back test. But let's talk about kind of the three big things that can go wrong in back testing. Of course, we haven't done them with this code because I'm trying to teach you right. But let's cover the three major mistakes people make. The first is impossible trades. Remember, these backtests, whenever you're using code to backtest, it's just simulating entrances and exits. I could go code a strategy really easily that makes uh, that makes the code buy the low of the day and sell the high of the day. And I can make this 100% win rate, huge returns, obviously. But of course, you can't actually do that because you don't have a crystal ball. The strategy is just going back in time and buying the low of the day and selling the high of the day. And there's tons of examples like that. I often see back test videos on YouTube of hike and ashy candles, which is fine and dandy, but hike and ashy candles are formulas. They're not the actual price of the ticker. So if you can make money buying where a hike and ashy candle is. That's great, but you can't actually buy the ticker at that price. That's not the actual price. So that's an impossible trade. That's the idea I'm getting out with that. The second major issue is survivorship bias. And this is where, if you remember in the early stages of this video series, we were testing this strategy on the daily chart of SPY, right? We were looking at the daily chart of SPY and we were looking at its returns and the returns look really good, right? Well, guess what? Survivorship bias is only focusing on hot markets. It's only focusing on what works. And in the last Do it. 20, 40 years of the SMP, you could close your eyes, flip a coin. If it lands on heads, buy, and then sell it a week later. And that's probably a profitable strategy, right? Stocks have been doing nothing but going up in the last forever, basically. Uh, of course, there's been periods, but basically always up. Does that mean you have a real market edge? No, it probably doesn't. It probably means you have survivorship bias. And I'm going to show you all how you can avoid that to future-proof your back test as much as possible here in a minute. Um, and then the third issue is a big one and I hope it makes sense and it will make sense as we dive into our own back test and how we don't make these mistakes, but it's only focusing on your PL. When back testing, you are dealing with static data. You are dealing with data that already exists. Uh, by the way, look, our, our strategy is in a trade right now. Nice. You are dealing with, sorry, you're dealing with data that already exists. Anybody can make money on data that already exists, on static data. That's really easy. That's not the point of backtesting though. You wanna be finding efficiency in your backtest. You wanna be taking the most efficient trades possible. That's the best way to future-proof your strategy. And once again, I'll show you how to fix that uh, with our own backtest here. So now let's go ahead and jump into how we would actually fire up a backtest. So where you have your orders being filled on your thinkorswim chart, if you right click on either a buy or a sell arrow, either one, and you hit show report, you now have a CSV file of all the trades from whichever time frame across whatever time. Uh, this is a the last 30 days on a one minute chart. These are all the trades that have been taken. I'm going to go ahead and hit export file. This is, of course, going to give me a CSV. I'm going to type in this is for the video series uh, test. Let's go ahead and just save that CSV, close. And now if I open an Excel document, I'd like to open a new Excel document. I already have Excel open. Um, so if I go ahead and open up Excel, I go to browse, that document is saved in my documents folder. I have to change this to all files since it is not an Excel file, it is a CSV file. This is for the video series. This is your data dump. This is what you're going to be provided with. CSVs are not great at formatting. So when you load it, you're gonna be brought with this. Quickly, 
if you just click on the B column here, you cut this out and move it over X number of rows. It really doesn't matter how many and then just paste it. So I just cut the B column, pasted it somewhere further off to the right. Uh, then I'm going to take this file. Uh, I'm going to go to data up here at the top. You guys can't see that if I hit data here at the top and then I go to, uh, oh, text to columns. I'm going to delimit my semicolons and I'm going to hit finish. That's going to break it out. I'm going to do the same thing with the A column. I'm going to delimit my semicolons, finish. Uh, yes, there's already data here. That's fine. Now look, it looks way better, right? All of a sudden we have data that we can work with. And this is not going to be an Excel class. I'm not going to go through exactly how I set up my sheets and how you should calculate your formulas and stuff. You all figure that out yourself. But now you have data that you can work with. And where you want to get to is a test like this. This is an actual test that I have run. And this is where kind of how I set it up, my entrance and exits with the news that was sharing. This is not from... Uh, this is not from your ThinkScript report, by the way. These are handwritten in. And then I calculate the rest of this. But I calculate my total PL, win percentage, average PL per trade, the max win, the max loss, the average win, the average loss. And all of these are just Excel formulas and your average R and R. But this is back testing. This is where you want to make sure you and you want to make sure you do this on at least 100 trades. You've all heard that before with at least 100 trades, prove your strategy. And that's great. But this starts, let's let's get into the second issue I talked about. The first issue was don't take impossible trades. And that is fixed by when you create your strategy, make sure that you're creating a strategy that can actually be traded upon. And we've already done that, right? So we don't need to fix issue one with our back test. But let's talk about issue two, which is survivorship bias. And that is looking at 100 trades on just the chart uh, that you wrote the code against. Just the subset of data that you wrote the code against just running that back test. That's fine and dandy, but you don't want to look at just where it worked. We have optimized this code to work as best as it can on the last 30 days of SPY. Now, what you want to do in backtesting is you want to take the code that you optimized for a subset of data, and then you want to test that same code against other subsets of data. That's the best way to future-proof your strategy, to not just write a strategy for the entire data warehouse, but to optimize for a specific and then place that into others. That's a, that's a well-known statistical kind of theory uh, in data, in uh, data testing. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to on demand in the top right. Let me shrink my thinkorswim so you can see what I'm about to do. If you hit this on demand button, maybe you didn't know this existed. This will take you back to any past day. Uh, so today is today's Valentine's Day, actually. Happy Valentine's Day. Let's go 30 days back from Valentine's Day. Uh, let's just say January 9th, whatever. Uh, so now, I have ran the test on the most recent 30 days and I pulled that report. Now using the on-demand feature, I can go back and I can run the report again for another previous 30 days, starting on November 23rd to January 6th. Now I can run the report and you can see this 30 days that actually made $779 as well. But you do this over and over and over again, collecting subsets of data across different market conditions as well. You'd probably want to go run the same strategy during COVID, during the 2008 uh, housing crisis, during the tech bubble, during the giant bear market. That's where you either start to decide one of two things. There's two schools of thought when it comes to testing uh, against multiple data sets like that. And it's either you want to ensure that Let's, let me start by saying this. Your strategy is coded for a specific market condition. You optimized your strategy for whatever the current market condition is, and you made that profitable. What you need to do is you either need to make sure that in other market conditions, the strategy doesn't get destroyed, right? Because that's fine and dandy if it works in one market condition, but then it gets destroyed in other market conditions. It's probably not a great strategy. Or if you can, and this is harder, you want to... Find and optimize which market condition the strategy works in so that you know to only trade it during that market condition. If you can objectify that, that's another great thing you can do via going back in time using the on-demand feature in Thinkorswim. Uh, sorry, I can't see. Uh, using the on-demand feature in Thinkorswim to go back in time to test your code against other subsets of data. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm throwing around words like data, subsets of data, Excel, CSV, statistics. If you have any questions, please comment section down below as always. But hopefully what I'm describing makes sense. At the end of the day, just ensure that 
you're running your back test against more than just the data that you wrote the code for because as i said at the intro of this video anybody can make a strategy work on static data that's really honestly really easy you already have data that's not changing it's easy to look at that data and to make a strategy make a bunch of money you then have to take that strategy and test it against other subsets of data right um and then let's also talk about the third point here, and this will be quick. Uh, the third, the third major mistake is only focusing on PNL. Along that same line, perfect transition. Anybody can make a strategy, make a lot of money. What you need to focus on is your win percentage, your R and R, and this average PNL number. I care way more about average PNL than I do about total PNL. I want to, in my back testing, make and optimize the strategy to have the highest average PNL possible. Because once again, I'm going to repeat myself for I think the fifth time. Total PL is very easy. Anybody can optimize for total PL, but in order to best future proof your backtest, meaning to ensure that to give you the highest probability, at least there's no insurance, no guarantee. Past results are not indicative of future, blah, 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 blah. You've all heard that. But to ensure you have the best chance moving forward, you, you want to be taking the most efficient trades possible, not just whatever grossed you the highest PL in your coding, right? So. That's it. That's how you use ThinkScript to backtest. That's how you backtest uh, appropriately. That's how you correctly backtest. And that's going to wrap it up for the video series. Uh, if you guys are just watching this video and you haven't seen it, uh, there will be an entire playlist. I also plan to put together a single video of all these videos together. But you all now know all of the basics you need to know how to get a strategy coded into thinkorswim with stop losses how to make the strategy only uh, only day trade how to modify time how to modify position sizes how to plot your points you know all the basics that it takes to write a strategy using thinkscript this channel will now become an, an area where i will be covering more and more strategies that I find are useful utilizing ThinkScript. So if this is interesting to you, you want to see more strategies, you want to dive deeper into code, make sure you're subscribed down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the series, if you enjoyed this video. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this video. I will catch you all in the next one.